In this video, we're going to be working on our testimonial section, which is going to require a carousel, as you can see right here. So to go ahead and achieve a, car a carousel in our project, we're going to be using a jQuery plugin by the name of Owl Carousel 2, which is a really cool and easy way to implement a carousel into your project, which we're going to be doing here today. So I will go ahead and leave the link down below in the description to go ahead and get to this site. So all we're going to need to do is head to this link and we're going to want to download uh, or hit the download tab here in the top right hand corner to go ahead and get the files to go ahead and implement this. So I've already done this, so I'm not going to go ahead and do it again. And once you go ahead and download that, you're going to get a folder right here, as you can see, with a bunch of files. Now we're not going to be needing all of these. I'm going to go ahead and go through the ones we need. So to start, let's go ahead and grab our JavaScript files we're going to be needing for this. So first up, we're going to go to the docs folder of our downloaded uh, folder. And we're going to look for vendors and we're going to grab our jQuery mini.js and then drag that into our Al Carousel folder. So nothing to do here. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out. And then let's go back to our folder here. Next up, we're going to want to grab the Al Carousel JavaScript file, which is going to be right here in the disk folder. So we're going to go ahead and grab that and drag it into our Al Carousel folder as well. And once again, don't need to touch any of this. Now with that, we need to go ahead and grab our CSS files to go ahead and implement this as well. So where we can find those is our assets folder in the disk and we have them right here. So we're gonna be needing the owl carousel min.css and also the owl theme min.css. Okay, we're gonna drag those into here and that's all we're going to need to go ahead and implement this. Now we need to head to our index.html and actually link up these files to our index file here. So. Let's go ahead and do this right above our Google font. So first up, we wanted to link up our, uh, let's see here, we have our owl theme default, that min.css, and then we also have our carousel min.css. So we're gonna do another link tag here, and we're gonna say CSS, and we're gonna say owl carousel min.css, okay? And that's all we need to do inside of our head section. Now coming down here into our body, we need to go ahead and link up our uh, script tag. So to begin here, let's go ahead and start with our owl carousel one. So we're going to say JS and then I believe, oh no, that's, that's a different folder. So we're going to say owl carousel and we're going to look for our jQuery and then we're going to go ahead and copy this because we're going to be needing that same folder again and we're going to link up our owl carousel min.js and there we go. And then finally we have one more JavaScript file here which is main.js which is where we're going to be doing, <coughs> excuse me, most of our JavaScript for this um, project once we get to that. So I thought we'd go ahead and link that up now. And it's actually what we're gonna go ahead and call our um, plugin for our carousel in this file as well. So let's go ahead and below this script tag, we're gonna say JS and then say main.js. So if we head back over to the Al carousel site, they actually have docs. And I wanted to go, go through these really quick and kind of show you what I'm doing here. So as you can see here, you want to include the CSS, which we did. Then we want to include our JS, which we went ahead and did. And then we need to go ahead and call the plugin here. So as you can see here, how we call this plugin is by this function right here. So I've already actually configured everything for this and I'm not really going to explain the JavaScript too much. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste it in here. You can actually grab all this stuff right off the site and I can show you where. And if we go to, I believe, a demo, and we want the basic one, you can see here we get another function with all of the defaults that I just went ahead and copied and pasted in. So I did go ahead and change some of these. So let me kind of show you what I did here. So as you can see, we have the default call function that we need to go ahead and init for this uh, plugin to work. And then you can see right here we have some settings here. So right now we have it saying uh, loop is true, which means it's going to continue looping. Autoplay is set to true, uh, margin is 10, nav is false, and responsiveness, we're only gonna have one item here at all times. If you did look over here, you can see that um, you can go ahead and change your responsiveness. So at zero uh, viewport or width, it'll be one item, which is gonna, you know, one thing in the carousel showing, which is, you know, something like this. You can see at a thousand, it's gonna have five. So as you shrink the viewport, this will also be responsive and shrink the number of items that are shown on the carousel. So Hopefully that makes sense. This is actually a pretty easy plugin to go ahead and implement. So we are all set and ready to begin working on this section and implement this carousel. So let's head over to our index.html and get started. To begin, let's go ahead and start off with our comment here. So we're gonna say testimonials. 
And then we're going to create our section tag here, which is also going to have the class of testimonials. And there we go. So inside of this section tag, we're going to be creating our div for our container. So we're going to say div dot container. And inside of this container, we're going to have our H2 as we always do, or our heading, and we're going to say testimonials. And there we go. Now, what we need to do is if I head over to our Owl Carousel demo, you can see the basic structure for our car carousel looks like this. We have a div with the class of Owl Carousel and Owl Theme. Now, these classes are going to be coming from the Owl Carousel Mini and the Owl Theme Default Mini CSS. Okay, so this is what our general structure is going to look like. Instead of having div with the class of items, we're going to create our own. Uh, flex rows in here, but we will be using this setup right here with the owl carousel and the owl theme. So let's head back to our si our index file here and create that. So we're going to say, uh, let's see, owl carousel, and we're also going to say owl theme. Okay. Now inside of here, we're going to be creating flex rows. So if I head over to our live demo here, you can see we have an image on the left and then our content on the right. So let's go ahead and achieve this, which is actually going to be something we've done uh, plenty of times within this project. So we're going to go ahead and create a div with a class of flex row. Inside of this flex row, we're going to be having an image and that image can be found in the testimonial section here. And we're going to go ahead and grab the testimonial dash one dot jpeg okay now after this we want to create our other class to go ahead and have the content on the right so we're going to go ahead and give this uh, class or this div a class of right and we're going to go ahead and have an h2 in here and this guy's name is going to be sal goodman which is what we're going to be using for all of them now this site isn't going to be dependent on you know real content it's more or less to show you how to create a lot of these layouts so a lot of the stuff is going to be repeated, but we will change the uh, testimonial image. And then for the H4, it's going to say CEO and founder. All right. And then for the summary of the testimonial, we're going to be using some lorem here. And I believe it's lorem, I'm going to say 30 maybe. Does that look right? And yeah, that looks about right. So. This is going to be the basic setup for each one of our carousel items here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go below our first flex row here and then copy and paste this in four more times. And as you can see here, each image is going to be the uh, next one. So two, three, four, and five. So if we take a look at our project here, we should have a sort of carousel implemented. I think I need to refresh this really quick. And there we go. And we are not seeing a carousel. So that is not good. That means we did something wrong along the way. So let me go ahead and see what was going on here. Okay, so it appears that I went ahead and typed in the class wrong for our carousel wrapper. As you can see, it is supposed to be owl carousel and I typed in own. So hopefully crossing our fingers here, if I go ahead and change this to an L and we go ahead and preview it now, it should be initialized properly and we should have a carousel and let's check it out here and we do so perfect. So everything is set up correctly and initializing properly. Obviously, if we don't have the class right, it won't be able to initialize as it's supposed to. So now that this is all set up and working, let's go ahead and add some styling to this. So to get started here, let's go ahead and start off with our comment. We're going to say testimonials. And then we're going to go ahead and open up that testimonials class here. All right. So what we want to do for this section, we're going to give this a background color of ECF. 5FF, which we have used before, I think. And then we want to do a box shadow here on the entire section of inset, which means it's going to be inside. And we want to set this to 0, 0, 12 pixels, 0, with an RGBA of black with a opacity of 1%. So we're going to say RGBA. And we're going to go and open up our parentheses here and say 0, 0, 0, and then do 0.1. And there we go. So if we head over to our section now, we should see this nice kind of light gray. And you can see that box shadow here on the top, um, but you can't see the bottom because we don't have any padding just yet. So 
let's go ahead and continue here. So I'm going to increase this a little bit to push everything over. Now, next up, we want to style our owl carousel here to shrink down the max width that it allows it to be. So we're going to go ahead and target owl carousel here. And we're going to say max width, and we're going to set this to 800 pixels. And then we're going to go ahead and set the margin to zero auto to go ahead and center that. So now if we take a look, it is a max width of 800 pixels, and it is now centered. All right. Next up, we want to target, uh, actually we'll go above here, and we're going to say our H2, and we're going to go ahead and text align this to the center. All right. Next up, we want to look at our image here. So right now our image is very big. We want to go ahead and shrink that. So we're going to start and we're going to say that we want the width to be 120 pixels. And we need to do important on here to override a certain style that we have on the uh, owl carousel mini and default. If we don't do this, it won't actually take effect. So we're going to say important here to override that style. We want to set the height of 120 pixels here. We're going to give this a border of four pixels solid, and we're going to make that white. So FFF, not money sign, FFF. Next up, we want to give this a border radius of 50% to go ahead and round the corners. And then we want to do a margin of zero on the top, zero on the right, 20 pixels on the bottom, and then zero on the left. And we're going to go ahead and create a media query here. And we're going to say media. We're going to go ahead and do a min width of 600 pixels. And inside of here, we're going to go ahead and change the, let's see here, what are we doing here? We're going to change the margin to be zero pixels on the top, 20 pixels on the right hand side then we're going to change the margin bottom to zero that we have here on the mobile view and then change the uh, left to also be zero and there we go that should work for the image so now we take a look it is now rounded a lot smaller and things are looking a lot better so let's continue on here so moving along we want to go ahead and style up our flex row a little bit so let's go ahead and target our flex row here and let's go ahead and do flex row and so at default, we want it to be a column for the mobile view. We're going to align the items to the center and also text align to the center on mobile. And then we're going to go ahead and set a media query here again. And we're going to use the same one we did earlier of a min width of 600 pixels. And in here, we're going to set the flex direction back to a row. We're going to align the items to flex start. And we're going to text align back to the start okay and then let's go ahead and continue on here so inside of our flex row we want to target our h2 because we do have an h2 outside of our flex row and we only want to target the one inside of our flex row so because we're doing that we will go ahead and nest this so let's go ahead and target our h2 here and we're going to say we want to text align this to the center uh, by default uh, which we already do. So actually we don't need this. And once again, it's me finding some ways to refactor this as we're going along here. So we don't need that. We'll actually go ahead and change that on the media query. Uh, so font size, we're going to be changing to 20 pixels. We're going to give this a color of 111. We're going to give this a margin of zero on the top, zero on the right, eight pixels on the bottom, and then zero on the left. And then for our media query here, again, we're going to be using that 600 min width we had been using already in this section, 600 pixels here. And then here we want to do text align to the start, and that should do it for our H2. And now we need to go ahead and target our H4 here. So inside of our H4 here, what am I doing? We want to go ahead and give this a font weight of 300. We're going to give this a margin bottom of a, actually, you know what? We need to do what I had before. We're going to give this a margin of zero on the bottom. And then we're going to say zero on the right, eight pixels on the bottom, and then zero on the left. Okay. And we want to go ahead and give this a color of 999. And then we want to give this a font size of 14 pixels and that should do it for our h4 
Now, finally, what we need to go ahead and do is target our paragraph tag here. So we have the font family set to, if we go up to the top here, Monastrab, but we're gonna change that for this paragraph tag here. We're gonna set it to a sans serif. We want to change the font weight to be 400. We're going to give this a font style of italic. So we'll go up to italic here and then give this a color of 444. And that should do it for the styling for this section. So let's go ahead and take a look. And as you can see, everything looks great. Now, the one thing we still need to go ahead and do is our padding. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do here is copy this class name right here, come up to the top where we have our styling for the padding, do a comma, period, copy and paste that in. And there we go, everything looks great. Now, if we go ahead and look at it on a mobile view, you should see that it's still is responsive and looks good. So let's scroll down here. As you can see, we have it uh, displaying as a column here on viewports less than 600. And there you go. It's not as well as responsive when you're actually shrinking it down. As you can see, when I'm doing this, it actually kind of glitches. That's just a part of the plugin. But when you go ahead and snap it, it goes ahead and aligns as it should. So that is going to do it for this section. Next up, we're going to be working on our team section here. So we will get to that in the next video.